So a fractal like Sierpinski's gasket uh, is sort of def e most easily defined in steps. So the initial step is simply a triangle. So this will be called step w zero, and uh, we can talk about both perimeter and area here. So for the sake of simplicity, we're going to say suppose that this has a side length of one, and so it has a perimeter of 3, and the area, uh, we're also going to be simplistic here and just say it has an area of 1. Now these aren't the same units, so don't freak out about that. So then in step 1, we are going to cut out the middle chunk of, of triangle. Uh, so these p three pieces remain, this piece has been removed. And so if we talk about side length now, now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 pieces, but each piece is half the length of the original. So now we have 9 pieces, each of length of half. And in terms of area, you'll notice these 4 triangles are all the same size, and we're left with 3 fourths of them. So this is step 1. In the next step, Step 2, we take out not only that middle triangle, but then the middle of each remaining triangle, and the non-shaded parts are the parts that are left. So if we think about side lengths now, we now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 sides, each of which uh, that are one quarter of the original length. Now you also could have noticed that really this piece of it right here is this analogous to the original previous step. So really we had three of these, nine times three, each of which is half the size of the original. So three times as many, but each is half the size. And so that'd be another way to come up with this 27 fourths. Now for the area, we now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 pieces remaining, each of which has an area of, well, let's see if you count those out, we end up having 16. Each of those is 1 16th of the size. Now again, you can notice that from here to here, this is analogous, this red area here is analogous to this. And so each of these areas is 1 quarter of the previous area hence the 4 to 16, uh, whereas we have 3 times as many of them, right? Because we got 1, 2, 3 whole of those chunks, so we get 9 sixteenths there, and that's step 2. In step 3, I'm sure you can imagine, we take out not only that middle and these middles, but then the middle of each of those little pieces there, right? And I'm not going to draw out the whole thing. But again, this piece here is analogous to the whole of the previous step. And so we're, so for perimeter, we're going to have each side is half the length it was before, but we've got three times as many of them. So we're going to have 27 times 3, or 81 pieces on the top. And for the area, again, each, pe each chunk of area is one quarter of the previous. So now we're into 60 fourths, but we have 3 times as many, so we got 27 60 fourths. And we start asking, okay, can I come up with a formula for the nth step here? And you'll notice that in my denominators, I have powers of 2, 2 to the n, right? This is 2 cubed, that's 2 squared. In the numerator, I got 3 to 9, so this is 3 squared, 3 cubed, that is 3 to the 4th, and so that looks like a 3 to the n plus 1. Over here, we got, looks like powers of 4 here, uh, so we got 4 to the n in the numerator, and the top, we've got powers of 3, it looks like we got 3 to the n. Now the true fractal of Sierpinski's gasket is what we get in the limit. So the actual shape that we're looking for is the limit as 
n approaches infinity here. And you'll notice that in the limit, any chunk here is going to be exactly the same as the pr as the whole shape itself, again, in the limit. Uh, so we might ask, what happens to perimeter and area in the limit? Well, in the, for the perimeter, you'll notice that we could also write this, we could pull a 3 out of the top there and say 3 times 3 to the n over 2 to the n. And so we have limit as n approaches infinity of 3 times 3 halves to the n. And since 3 halves is bigger than 1, that limit's going to go to infinity, which means the side lengths, the total combined side lengths, end up going to infinity. Now if we look at the areas, we're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity here of 3 quarters to the n. And since 3 quarters is less than 1, this limit is going to go to 0, which isn't horribly surprising since at each step we're taking away from the area. The thing that's so fascinating here is that uh, the here we have a shape that is contained in a certain region that has zero area, but an infinite perimeter or an infinite side length, and that's what makes fractals really interesting.